you suffer from the debilitating symptoms of chronic pain, swelling, and loss of joint motion due to arthritis? Are you taking drugs like Celebrex and Vioxx or other super aspirin prescriptions? If you are, you're increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke by up to 50%. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, host of Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon. Why live with pain or the dangerous side effects of drugs when the doctors at the Rosell Center for Healing practicing 21st century integrative medicine can help you experience relief like never before? Simple, safe, chiropractic, acupuncture, and nutritional care can provide significant relief from arthritic pain in less than six weeks. More than 70% of our patients experience a return to life far beyond their expectations. Give yourself the best gift possible, freedom from arthritic pain, naturally. Call today to schedule an appointment. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live in studio, waiting to take your phone calls on any subject you have in mind. Perhaps you've had a problem, you've tried, you've applied. Here's an opportunity. Call us, 888 630 9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. Let's kind of weed through the weeds, as they say, and uh, see what we can do to help you out without drugs, without surgery. Here's an opportunity. You know, every Sunday we have a topic, or it's kind of many topics sometimes, and we kind of uh, try to figure out what's what. Let's roll the clock back three weeks ago, and we did our annual Ageless Health Seminar. And this year it was on brain-body connection. It's a phenomenal topic. It's one that scientists in traditional community now are really getting the intimacy, the understanding, the relevance of how it affects everything in your body. And there's this whole impact of, you know, the structural chemical emotional paradigm that we've talked about. No place is it truer than in this very specific area of medical physiology. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about how your brain controls virtually everything in your body, but today we're going to talk about immune system. And in studio, somebody that is near and dear to our hearts and somebody that you know very well, Dr. Scott Lamp, and his topic at Asia's Health was psychoneuroimmunology. And what does that mean? I mean, we're going to talk about how your immune system is affected by neurological function, but more importantly, how your environment from trauma to chemistry to stress patterns affect that. So having said that, Scott, see, I got all the hard stuff out of the way. Now it's up to you. Do I have to say that word again, psychoneuroimmunology? Only if you are completely without any kind of biochemical inhibition. I think so. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise it's not coming out, my friend. <laughs> there you go. It's cold outside, you know, so, and that has a stressor on immune function as well. But there you go. Let's, let's get into the pattern. You know, you talked about psychoneuroimmunology at the, the, uh, presentation and this Wednesday evening you're going to do the topic again uh, in, a, in a little different way but similarly on how the brain controls immunological function but more importantly what are, what happens to the brain you know that causes immune system either to be strong in many cases or to be broken and subsequently people much more susceptible to all kinds of things and then you're going to show them how to fix it so this Wednesday evening by the way Put a check mark in your your uh, calendar and please show up because this is an opportunity to really find out how the brain controls everything. But more importantly, what's happened to your brain and nervous system that's allowing your immune, immune system not to f uh, function the way it's supposed to. Let's talk about this a little bit. Yeah, I think one of the things we're really looking at is like what is the interaction uh, between the brain and body and really what kind of the balance of that is and the role of the your psychological well-being uh, with health and really the recovery from, from illnesses with that. And I think one of the things we're going to cover is some of the behavioral strategies that prevent diseases and promote healing and enhance uh, how can we enhance well-being uh, across the, the lifespan, um, looking at both aspects of uh, there's structural components, uh, as Tom was talking before, structural components, emotional components, um, and uh, the biochemistry chemistry, uh, uh, parts of that too. Um, there's a couple of interesting books, I think, that are out there that uh, – uh, one that's uh, called uh, Your Gut Has a Mind of Its Own, The Second Brain, 
uh, by Michael uh, Gershon, and he's an interesting aspect. He's a gastroenterologist. He was looking at the aspects of working with the autonomic nervous system, which is that uh, the, the part of the system that's automatically in play. Your unconscious mind is doing it. And um, he found that when he cleaned up the gut, 70 to 80% of the people who had uh, depression cleared up. Well, we know that, and we've known that forever, that the intestinal system produces somewhere in the neighborhood, some authors say up to 80%, but 70% of all neurochemistry right. from serotonin, GABA, and, and so forth, where the list goes on. And when the intestinal system is irritated because of our lifestyle and mm -hmm. because of stresses and because of injury and trauma, there's the triad again, structural, chemical, emotional, yeah. that it can't produce those things. And they're in balance. And subsequently, the end product are those things you just talked about. Yeah. The, the serotonin, basically, I think they say about 95 percent of it's stored actually in the gut. So if you don't, you're not making it. And then serotonin is that supposed to thing that's supposed to make us relax and at ease. Ain't gonna happen. No, it doesn't happen at all. You know, the the process of understanding the psycho neuro immunological response. So what does that mean? If we break it down, psycho means mind body right. connection, the brain body connection. Uh, neurolo neurology, the you know, that's our that's our relay system. That's what causes everything else to stand up and pay attention and work and function. And then, you know, uh, immune function. Well, that's the thing that if you asked, you know, the general population, what's your immune system? And they may tell you that's your body's uh, ability to defend itself from the uh, slings and arrows and the insults of uh, our environment. Injury, chemistry, emotion. Mm -hmm. So let's take it from here. Up until recently, it was widely held that the nervous system did not have a ability to, in many cases, produce toxin or get rid of toxin. But the last is more important because we know that uh, toxic accumulation goes throughout every place in the body. But it said that the, the nervous system did not have, the brain specifically, did, brain, not yes. have, did not have the ability to get rid of toxins that accumulated in it. It yeah, had no which, lymphatic drainage. There was a peer review, I believe it was a research aspect review or element as, as uh, early as 2009 that said there was undisputed fact that there was no uh, uh, lymphatics to the to the brain element. And that's been now been changed and been finding some of this, which is actually making it very exciting because some of these things is now that we've found some of the lymphatic chain directly to the brain, you might have some effects on things like um, uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease, um, MS, some of those things with some Parkinson's. of the plaques of Parkinson's, some of these placking that's uh, backing up in the system and it might have a way maybe that lymphatic is not flowing the right way to remove some of this debris. Well, what they're saying is that the amyloid you know, tissue that builds plaque, up yeah. that causes the, this placking is unable to metabolize. It right. accumulates. It's, there's no way for it to get out. Well, the thing of it is if it can get in there in the first place... Isn't it a similar channel? By, by to get out. Right? I would think that you know if it's if it's being built up through a toxic reaction that there's a lymphatic uh, pattern that is causing that, but it also by default says that that same lymphatic channel would have to be able to remove it. Right. It's it's amazing to me that traditional science and allopathic community can't come to that conclusion but finally i mean you, you and i were talking 2009 they said absolutely not it does not happen the the brain does not have a lymphatic toxic removal system now 2015 this last year it's a 180 degree reversal in fact yes it does have this removal system yeah, there's a lot of things with the brain that are interesting just on a, a side note you know when you're talking about the brain wasn't supposed to be plastic it's supposed to be, it is what it is, it's pre-wired, and that's what you got. And now they said you can change it. You get The, the brain is, is plastic, works a little harder when you're older, but uh, to change the plasticity but uh, or change the aspect of the brain. But it's, you know, there's amazing things that this brain can do that we're still finding out about. Let's talk about, let's pick this apart, because you did such a great job, you know, a few weeks ago, and, you know, making this very complicated topic extremely simple. And... When we talk about psychoneuroimmunological effects, again, psychic meaning the mind, neuro the, mm -hmm. the nervous system, and all the components of that, and immunological response, 
what really is that all about? How does it affect everything? We talked a little bit about you know the accumulation of toxin right now and also the intestinal tract being involved in this. But let's talk about that nervous system and its linkages and why it's so critical to understand the nervous system as it relates to everything else and then the insults that take place. Well, let's kind of like see the talk about maybe the players in the game. And I think the other thing, too, is like you were talking about with the channels for the lymphatics. I think everything has got a two-way street. Um, you know, the, the stomach has a problem. It could create the problem with the brain. The brain has a problem. Has a problem with the stomach. Players in the game is one, one of the things called the autonomic nervous system. It's that automatic thing. You can't hold your breath and die. Uh, despite yourself, you'll keep on breathing because the automatic ner- nervous system is automatic. It's there. It's part of that thing's working. That's one of those things that play a part of it. And you've heard from us the sympathetic and parasympathetic pathways. That plays in this thing called the autonomic nervous system. Um, inflammation is a big one because inflammation has a tendency to block things. It makes things not communicate, gets in the way, uh, creates problems there. Neurotransmitters, how we communicate in a brain, is another one that's important, just like we talked about serotonin. And then we have things like your genetics and then environment. Okay, so let's, let, let's talk a little bit about I mean, you've, you've put out a lot of words here, and a lot of people are going to sit there and say, huh, what? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Again, neurotransmitters are what? What are they specifically? It's a from one nerve connects to another nerve. There's a chemical that jumps around this. The kind of like, think of it like a little uh, gap, and in between that gap, the neurotransmitter come, takes information from one side of that gap to the other side of the gap. So it's a, it's it's a communication. It's a facilitator communication. Correct. And those guys, as you said, just to get our our audience so they're online with us. We said earlier that 75 to 80 percent of those neurotransmitters are produced in the intestinal system. Correct. So bad gut, not enough neurotransmitters, or inflamed areas, so they can't transmit. Right. Okay. So we've got we have that piece. Now we've got the the. Uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk all anonymous. Uh, the the. Uh, I was going there. Parasympathetic. Okay. The parasympathetic. Sympathetic. Well, let's talk about what happens when we get scared. Um, there's a thing that uh, there's a sympathetic reaction that happens to our body that kind of like um, I want to run away. I want to protect myself. Uh, our primary reflex is to survive. But there's consequences when we're only supposed to do that for, let's say, the lion's coming after me. I have to run up a tree and I do that for a minute or two. And then I sit and rest. The lion goes away. And then hopefully that doesn't happen for another couple of months or if, if ever. But in this society, we're constantly running all the time. And so if you're in that state, you create an imbalance. And we've talked about mind, body, imbalances. Then all of a sudden, next thing you know, certain certain things start to happen. Like in our gut, we lose circulation to it. And we lose circulation, which means it doesn't work as well because the body's more concerned about running away. So now in our environmental status with getting in an emotional upset, all of a sudden my stomach is not working as well. I'm not producing the chemistry. Then there's a serotonin connection that possibly happens there. And you go into depression. And you go into depressions. So it's an interesting aspect. If you're in there for long enough periods of time of stress, depression falls all on its, on its heels. Okay, let's talk about something that probably the majority of our, our audience can relate to at one time of their life or, or another. Let's talk about pain stressors. People who put up with pain because of injuries that have taken place, they're taking medications to suppress it, their nervous system is not working, obviously, because they wouldn't be in pain if it did, right? Right. How does that, and you know, very quickly, how does that, that pain pattern affect everything we're talking about? Well, I mean, if you're in constant pain, again, the other aspect, I think, is an inflammatory element. If you go into, I don't want to get into the higher elements of the brain, but if you get aspects of inflammation up in those th- th- those places, um, there's a there's an interesting uh, quote that I actually have from one of the uh, journals that talk about um, taking the shingles vaccination. And if the person is depressed before they take the shingles vaccination, the shingles vaccination supposedly doesn't work as well. It actually drops down 70, 80 percent. So if a person's already got inflammation there, then what happens is, is that it starts creating some blockages along the way and get this problem. Well, you know, you get into the shingles vaccine. And again, if that's a, a topic that we could discuss the rest of the program on. But it simply is not one of those things that, in my opinion, that the majority of people who they're telling to take the vaccine should even consider taking it, and we can talk about that as well. We're coming up to a break. We're going to talk about how this mind-body, brain-body connection uh, works, the things that are happening to you that you're not aware of, but the important pieces that you have to understand is the psychoneuroimmunological effect, meaning that 
your body is affected by everything around you, trauma, injury, pain patterns, the things you eat, the things that you shouldn't be eating, the things that you're exposed to, electromagnetics and so forth, your emotional stress patterns. Dr. Scott said, you know, we're under stress a lot, particularly living in the greater Washington metropolitan area. It's not okay. We're going to show you how to put those things together. And just remember, this Wednesday evening, Dr. Scott Lamp will be your host, your presenter at the Roselle Center for Healing. Don't go away. We'll be right back. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Immune System and the Brain with Dr. Scott Lamp on Wednesday, November 11th at 7.30 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is, a do-it-yourself program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. Indeed, we're in studio. It's cool, but it's very pretty outside. So bundle up, go for a walk after the program, unless you have your you know, cell phone with you and you can listen to us while you're walking around, which is a good idea as well. 888-630-9625, 888 That's how you find us here at the studio. Remember, my guest in studio, Dr. Scott Lamp, is your presenter, your host this Wednesday evening at the Roselle Center for Healing, and he's going to be talking on the brain and immunological function and how those things that impact the nervous system, the brain specifically, is going to control your expression of immunological ability capacity within the system. So join us. We'd love to have you as our guest. All you have to do is call 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to attend. And I'd like you to understand that these are a gift to you. The Result Center for Healing has a philosophy that education is important, and we want to educate you so you can take care of yourself. That's why we do these topics on an every other week basis, and it's important that you glean as much. Remember, I've said forever, don't believe anyone, including us, but if our job is nothing more than to stimulate and provoke your investigation for you to accumulate and weigh the pattern, is this right or is this wrong? You know, and do it for yourself and your family, then we've done our job. We've served you. That's why we would like you to join us this Wednesday evening. Call the office at 703-698-7117. Remember, there's absolutely no charge for our in-house presentations. You're welcome. Please join us. Call us here at 888 Scott, we've got a few minutes, let's, and our lines are lighting up a little bit, and we will take your calls today. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, we we dropped off. We were talking about the uh, parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system, right, and right. you know you, you talked a little bit about the sympathetic meaning you're out there chasing the tiger all the time. And right. living in the Washington area, we're chasing the tiger. You know, right. we have mortgages, we have credit cards, we have stress patterns, we have bosses, we have commute problems, mm-hmm. we have dietary patterns that stink. You mm-hmm. know, and those are all stresses, right? Right. And I think what's interesting, too, is when we talk about some of these wiring, uh, the autonomic nervous system is uh, there's a physical structure that's attached to different parts of our body. And what it's interesting is when we stress out, uh, the lymphatic system seems to be attached pretty strongly, uh, and also some major glands, there's a thing called the thymus gland and the spleen gland, which is part of their immune system, are wired to the sympathetic part but not the rest and relaxation part, the parasympathetic okay, part. Okay, just, just, for, just for location, the thymus gland is in the center of the chest underneath the breastbone, right. and the spleen is on the left side behind the lower portion of the rib cage. Now, these two guys produce all kinds of immunological support, the thymus, particularly for uh, antiviral patterns in the body and uh, anti-carcinogenic patterns and so for the spleen, helping produce certain types of white blood cell responses and the like, and they maintain. But these guys are under attack constantly. Right, exactly. 
I think um, so. One of the things we're looking at is is that what is happening in that parasympathetic. So even that's the, where the psychological aspect comes in. Is what is what's happening there? Along with, I mean, that's one stressor along with some of the other toxins and other things that we have. Uh, so where the balance is is how do we get back? And I think this is where again is where the psychoneuroimmunology comes in. How do we get back to a balance of resting the body so it's not under under constant stress? And um, it was an interesting thing, uh, according to a psychologist, uh, Rex Schmidt, at uh, Nebraska Medical Center. And talking about pain aspects, he was, he's saying that depression and pain happen to share a part of the brain that's involved in both conditions, which means that the mind-body techniques that affect these areas can be beneficial for both. Beneficial both ways. That's right. What was his conclusion? How? Well, like basically, if we do something in regards to do relaxation techniques, maybe cognitive therapy or Tai Chi or things to settle the body down, then basically it can actually reduce the depression aspects sometimes associated or some of the inflammation of the brain can actually be calmed down. Hold that thought. We're going to come back and we're going to explore that very significantly, but I do want to begin the process of taking some calls. We're here at 888 That's 888 My guest in the studio, Dr. Scott Lamp, your host this Wednesday evening at the Results Center for Healing on how the immune system is affected and protected by the brain and its nervous system and its connections throughout the body. Bernice, my dear friend. Bernice, are you there? Yes. I didn't think he just turned into a cat, but I heard a cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's hungry. I already fed him. You know, all, I, um, all I know is, is it's 55 degrees here, and you're sitting there with 72 degrees right now? Yep, it's pretty nice. Yeah, at 9 o'clock in the morning, something uh, like that? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, you're not any fun at all. You no. <laughs> what, what's... Yeah, yesterday was a little warmer, and today's a little windy, but it's really nice. I mean, you can go outside and rake the yard or do whatever you want. Uh, okay, okay, enough, yeah. enough. Yeah. What's, 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 about, what's uh, your question about, you know, I had, I had an uncle, he just passed away, but um, he was 93 when he passed away, and he would get jealous with his wife. Well, does that have something to do with Alzheimer's? Otherwise, he was pretty normal. <laughs> That's uh, jealousy at any uh. level is, is a problem. We're talking about an emotional pattern. Let let me. We only have a few minutes left, and let, so let me take uh, take this and, and simply say this. Uh, any kind of emotional stress is a stressor that's going to deplete the immune system. Having said that, any kind of stress to the body can produce aberrant emotional representation. So it's very difficult to tell which came first, the you know the chicken or the egg. You'd have to know more about him and what took place, but I can tell you it's, it's depletion and so forth. I wish we'd get into this a little bit more. Um, I will answer your questions on vitamins for elderly people when we come back. So thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. Did you know that breast cancer is on the rise and that routine annual mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest X-ray? The result could increase the risk of developing breast cancer. Now, consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe adjunct medical procedure approved by the FDA, which can detect evidence of breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect initial signs of breast cancer, such as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call Thermography Centers at 888-485-7736. That's 888-485-7736. And for more information, visit thermographycenters.com. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and include a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Roselle here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. Call us right now, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. We're talking about the brain and the body, the brain-body connection, but as it relates to your immune function as it should be in a healthy state. Unfortunately, many of you are not so healthy, and you wonder why it takes place. Well, we're talking about that. And my guest in studio, your host this Wednesday evening, Dr. Scott Lamp. And Dr. Scott, your whole presentation at the Brain Body Seminar that we did three weeks ago was this topic of psychoneuroimmunology. And it really means that the mind and the effect that the 
the environment has on the mind controls your immunological function. But we're talking about injury patterns and chronic pain. We're talking about biochemical exposures. We're talking about emotional stress. You know, when people think about these types of things, they talk about the mind, anxiety and fear and depression and, and anger sometimes and so forth, those kind of things. But it's it's not that. Those are stressors in of themselves. Right. Obviously, chemical, chemical imbalance can cause those stressors. But nevertheless, let's let's go through this thing. We, you know, you alluded to before we we uh, uh, took a break at the bottom of the hour here is that uh, the mind does control every aspect of immunological function, and it does it through this fight flight phenomena. Correct. And that you know we live in a constant stress pattern, and that any kind of stress, be it an injury, putting up with pain, biochemical right. insult, things you know that people are consuming today that you, know, you wouldn't give an animal if you wanted to keep it alive, right. and then emotional stress, the compounded effects are what we're talking about. And not only that, but there is a fix, but most people don't want to. But let's talk about the ramifications. What really happens, you know, with this whole paradigm? You talked a little bit earlier about a guy by the name of Norman Cousins. Right. And he was dying of a, a, a blood dyscrasia, cancer of, of uh, unknown origin. Actually, it was ankylosing spondylitis. He yep. was actually uh, having some problems with that. It, and, it was. But yeah, and, yeah. That, and that can destroy him. But he also had a blood pattern that would go right. along with it. So he was told that he's going to die. Right. That he had about six months to live, mm-hmm. and that uh, you know he was his personality was a very determined, very stress related, you know, push, push, push type of guy, and he made a change. He shifted. Yeah. What happened? Well, one of the things he did was is he was looking at um, uh, laughter as being one of the key aspects that he was working on. He wanted to actually, he got out of the hospital, went to I don't know if it was I think it was an apartment or a hotel next door. And he said um, endorphins are some things that the body does. When you laugh, you actually release. It makes the body feel better. It's a natural painkiller. Um, and he actually had, tw- I think it was three or four times a day, he would want to do heavy belly laughter, the real kind of uncontrollable laughter that uh, uh, to affect this. And it seemed to have an effect on some of the inflammatory pathways of the body. And actually, he made himself or laughed himself better. Um, and that's the point of that. Um, I think what we're looking at is, is the things that we do to our bodies, both bad in regards to maybe, again, the, the structural, chemical, emotional elements can create havoc to the brain. But if we do things to calm the brain, we can come back in the other direction and actually and also take away from the irritations. We can actually bounce it back out. I think you can do both. I mean, it goes both ways. So if I eat something bad and then it can actually transfer it into something bad in my stomach and affect my brain, if I change my food habits... I can go back and go back and affect the brain and then actually be better. Emotionally, the same way. Um, so if I can settle the body down from a, you know, a sympathetic running away from the tiger effect, I can actually literally decrease the reactions, the inflammatory reactions in the brain. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. I'd love to talk to you. Dr. Scott Lamp is my guest, your host this Wednesday evening, the 11th of the month, 11th of November. My gosh, things are going by way too fast. At the Roselle Center for Healing, 7.30 p.m. Love to have you as our guest. These presentations are a gift to you because we want to educate you. We're going to come back and we're talking a little bit about uh, how distortions within the body actually will affect the immune system. But before we do that, I want to go to the phones. Colette, thank you for holding and being patient. How can I help you? Uh, Yes, I had uh, uh, my had spinal stenosis, and then I got last week this thing, epidural injection, but my legs are still like the back of my thigh down to the leg. It is like a clamp. So, I don't know what to do. Well, the thing that is is that a spinal stenosis, you know, for our listens, listeners, is a narrowing of the canal that comes out of the spine where the nerve comes through. And it's it's made up actually two bone areas called the vertebrae. And in between that, there's a canal that's formed that allows the exit of one of the spinal nerve roots and or many of the spinal nerve roots. And you can have stenosis narrowing of that canal either because the disc in between has... Uh, decreased its height because of degeneration and lifestyle and injury and so forth over time, or we, now we have calcification, hardening that occurs, and it starts strangling the nerve as it goes through. So when 
you have an injection, which is a depomedral injection, a steroid, the, uh, what it's trying to do is decrease the inflammation, the swelling around the nerve. But if the stenosis is one due to shrinkage of the disc or uh, changes in the bone structure, it's not going to work. It's, it may kill the localized pain because that's what a steroid will do. But once it goes away over time, that pain will slowly come back. But it's the downstream, the effect that it's having in your leg, that is the problem. The only thing that will help that, Colette, at this point is that you have to do a couple different things. One primarily is that you have to see somebody that does the work like Dr. Lamp and any of my doctors in the office where they do something called spinal decompression therapy. And and it's a way of actually manually, without surgery, begin to gently open up the spacing and allow that nerve to revitalize itself, but also nutritional patterns that will begin to restore and heal that neurological system. That works, and we see it work repetitively with many patients who have advanced stenosis over pretty many years. I think another thing there, uh, Colette, too, is also uh, we're talking about anything that's causing inflammation in, in a small space that's narrowed. Additional inflammation will actually put pressure on the uh, aspect of the nervous system, so we really got to clean all that up. Colette, let me give you a personal example. I have uh, four areas in my back that, in my lower back, that I have stenosis in. And they're due to multiple injuries that have taken place over the years. And I've had three neurosurgeons tell me that they want to fuse my back. And this is going back. It started, you know, the injury started compounding over many years, but some very dramatic things over the last 10, 10 to 12 years. And obviously, being in the area that I'm in and knowing what I know, that's not going to happen. Nobody's going to touch me with a knife. And because I know once that's done, the fusions are done and so forth, the end result is far worse than anything you can possibly think of. So what did I do? I did exactly what I'm telling you to do. Uh, I'm, I did spinal decompression. I did uh, energetic work with acupuncture. I changed dietary patterns dramatically years ago. Uh, I'm using certain enzymes. And I can function. I can do anything that I want to do, and I can continue to do them on a day-to-day -day basis. So there is a resolution. No matter where you're at or what your age is, you can do things significantly without uh, medication. Now, is it 100% for every patient? No, but help can be given generally 100% across the board, and only a full routine examination would show that. Colette, if we can help you, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to do that. You can give us a call or even join us this Wednesday evening on the Brain Body Phenomenon, and Dr. Lamp will have the opportunity to talk with you specifically. 703-698-7117. Tell my staff that you'd like to attend. Uh, let's get it back into that uh, that topic a little bit, my friend, and let's talk about how this, how more importantly, how does one suffer the slings and arrows that cause the brain not to communicate properly? You know, let's let's pick them apart. We you know we talk about injury, we talk about mm -hmm. emotional stress patterns, we talk about the stuff that we put into our body and that we absorb into our systems and so forth. Walk us through that a little bit. Well, and I hope, I hope I catch your question correctly. Um, well, not if you don't make it up. I don't care. <laughs> I'll lead you um, to where I want to go. <laughs> I think one of the things we're looking at is, is like what causes these problems in the first I mean, I, one of the th big things is inflammation. I mean, inflammation and all the different things that happen with that, and they, bra they block passageways. And think of inflammation as being a blockage. Um, inflammation will block sometimes neurotransmitters, so block hormones, um, and inflammation by itself causes pain and then sets up like a, you know, these inflammatory acids and swelling in different areas of the body. So the communication aspect, and that's the key thing here, is maintaining communication in the body systems. Um, and if they get blocked up and come stagnant, then that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, Again, we could talk about the emotional aspect. We can do the toxin aspects. We can talk about bad bacteria, not enough of the bacteria that we have, the antibiotics over a period of time. Um, an interesting thing that we haven't really talked about is, is also some of our genetic expression, too, and how much these toxins affect that also, and how we have a cleaning process. There's a process uh, like through our lymph system and whatnot, and a methylation process, which is a process of how our body cleans the system out. And if it's not running the right way and things are backing up, then it's going to cause all kinds of upheaval in the systems. Well, when we talk about inflammatory pathway processes in the body, and you said you know what, what inflammation is, I think that, you know, a, a good visual for people is simply this. If you go to shake hands with somebody mm -hmm. and, you know, an old Boy Scout handshake, right? Yeah. You're going to slip two fingers in and you're going to get three around, a Girl Scout handshake type, a similar type of thing. And 
you lock somebody's hands, you're binding in one hand to the other. It's it's a synapse. It is a uh, same thing that a cell does with the transmission of a neurotransmitter. Inflammation is a blockage. Now take a sheet of paper, just a normal uh, sheet of paper, put it on one person's hand, and try to shake hands. It's not that thick. It's not, you would think, very obstructive, but it's enough that does not allow that synapse to bind. So now you can't transmit from one area to the other. You can't bind from one area to the other. There's a blockage that has occurred that has built up, sometimes slowly, sometimes Mm -hmm. dramatically, over a period of time. Fair? Yeah. I think another thing to build on that, too, is we have certain gene expressions. And, for example, we're supposed to be able to get things from our parents or grandparents, so on and so forth, our ancestry. Um, but then we have mutations in some of those genes. And sometimes they actually uh, reveal themselves or sometimes they don't. And usually when they reveal themselves is because we add toxins or inflammation in the system. The body's forced to make a compensation, and all of a sudden we get these gene expressions. And it's kind of an interesting aspect where a lot – what's also, again – psychoneuroimmunology, if I can control my brain to calm my brain down, do things that are cognitive uh, behavioral aspects, things like maybe Tai Chi and yoga and those kind of things, I can literally make the gene expression that is mutated actually maybe not show. So that's another thing about how the brain can get involved with some of the techniques we'll probably talk on Wednesday about, about how we can actually counteract some of these things. But this is, it's also, it's like a, we, some of us are pre-wired to have some things. If we do, then we can actually either control the toxins, inflammation, or control our mindset to actually work on healing that. It's important to understand that, you know, when we talk about inflammation, there's so many things that can trigger that. Yeah. And, you know, Tons. And, and, you know, things, when we don't give our body a chance to detoxify, when we don't give our body a chance to heal, and we keep adding insult on injury over a period of time, the thing that we see all the time are people who are in chronic pain patterns and they're putting up with uh, the pain by taking tons of different medications which in of themselves are inflammatory and actually make it worse you know when i sit down with a patient after i've uh, examined them and i go through what we call our brain body diagram right. and i sit there and i said look here's what takes place you know you, you're born with function or the capacity of function and then you have injury that takes place over time and then you don't eat the way you're supposed to you put junk in your body and you stress like crazy but in our society nobody teaches us really how to deal with those things and subsequently we end up with something called symptoms you name it doesn't make any difference those are symptomological presentations so we go to the local doctor and we complain about it and, and you know most of these guys are good guys they but they're locked into the focus of you know uh drug force uh, for symptom they give the drug and Nothing happens. They blunt it. The patient is more able to tolerate the problem, but the problem progresses now to the point where you have pathology. At the end of the day, pathological considerations are those things that we can observe. They're the stenosis. Right. They are the cardiac disease, the cardiovascular placking. The diabetes. They are the, the diabetes and the damage from the diabetes. Cancers. That's right. right. And those are what we see. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the expression of the nervous system on everything else. Nothing works unless the nervous system works. Right. And I think that's, that's one of the you know, it's how much we're putting layer upon layer upon layer. If you go back to your analogy with a piece of paper, now you've got a phone book between your hands. Um, it's just more and more and more, inf- more and more things are being done. How much more are we being exposed to? And take a look at society at large. How many now these diseases, the autism, which is like out of control. Uh, in some cases, what, one out of 50 uh, boys or one out of 25, depending on the circumstances you're talking about, that these things are building up. And, you know, we try to detoxify ourselves. We try to get our emotions set. But the thing is, the question is, it's kind of like a bucket. If you keep on pouring water in that bucket, it's going to start spilling over. You know, you've got to be able to have a balance to where you can take some of that water off. You can't keep on filling up the bucket and it's going to start spilling over and ha- having some damages. And we're seeing more and more of this ever since World War II. We started with a lot of antibiotics and everybody's being affected. We don't even talk about the, uh, the, the, the micro, uh, the microbacteria that's in our gut that's, that's part of the, our health situation that's and being invaded. And it's being, and it's being killed out by everything. Stress kills the, uh, microorganisms that are necessary to protect you in your, insist- your intestinal system. 75, uh, 80%, 85%, some authors uh, indicate that that's your entire immunological function. Right. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Your, your uh, president, 
presenter this Wednesday evening. I'm tired. That was a long trip from Toronto. We'll get back. It's Dr. Scott and Lab, my guest in studio. We'll be right back. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizzo Live. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. 888-630-9625 is how you find us when we're here at the show and ask your questions. And if you have a question when we're not here in the studio, it's real easy. Go to drtomrosell.com. That's D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E.com. That's drtomrosell.com. Or you can go to the Roselle Center for Care website at Roselle Care, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E dot com, and send us a note. We will get back to you if you'd like to talk to one of my doctors and have a, a quick answer on a problem that you're having. Just let our staff know, and they will get a hold of the right person for you to talk to. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. We're here every Sunday, twelve noon, same place, same time, bringing you the most intimate uh, answers to problems that you have without drugs, without surgery. This Wednesday evening, the 11th of November, Dr. Scott Lamp will be your presenter, your host at the Rizal Center for Healing. He's going to be talking about psychoneuroimmunology, or how the brain controls your immunological function and what can be done about it. More importantly, if you're in pain, you know, your chemistries are off and you're under a lot of stress, trust me, your immune system is not going to work properly and you're going to be more susceptible to many different types of things. Call our office at 703-698-7117, 703-698-7117. Do it today because once we are a full house, we're a full house and we can't take any more. Sylvia, how can I help you? Oh, hi. You have a hi, question on ready. coronary disease, yes? You're, you're educating. I'm, I'm getting just like you. I don't trust anything until I know the background medically. And I wanted to ask for the follow-up on the Chorus CAD blood test, which coincidentally a neighbor of mine was recommended to get actually about two days ago. I can know the good, bad, and ugly, if you would. Well, it's a gene expression. We're going to get in. Well, Dr. Scott and I were sitting here talking a little bit about it, and there's many different ways of determining whether or not uh, you know you have a predisposition, if you will, to coronary disease. Uh, there's these things called BRCA markers. They've been out for a while. They'll give you not only uh, your genetic predisposition to things like coronary disease, but also t- uh, to things like cancer, breast cancers, and, and so forth. Uh, are they valid? Yes. They've been out there. They're uh, being used more and more now. Uh, with the Specifically uh, with the course CAD test, uh, it's not recommended in the medical community for people who are diabetic. It sh- you have to be a non-diabetic uh, person. Um, it has multiple pieces uh, of the uh, of the uh, predictor markers in there. A, it's been out for a while. The initial studies were done at Vanderbilt University, and uh, it's they're using it now, and apparently it's been even paid by Medicare uh, to determine outcomes, in uh, particularly in older people. Uh, it's best used in people who have had no prior uh, heart attacks or any kind of uh, vascular ruptures or so forth because and people who are not using steroids and people who are, are not on certain types of immunological suppressive drugs. Then it doesn't work. It's the, the jury's out. Dr. Scott, we were talking about VAP tests and we were talking about some other things that I think that are even more predictive. Yeah, I mean, on the chemistry side, you can use a VAP test, which is actually kind of your lipid panel uh, screening, which is more precise than your standard lipid panel, and that's something to maybe take a look look at you know uh, ldl gets uh the ldl is supposed to be concerned the bad uh cholesterol but uh that's actually broken down into different types of ldls uh some are better than other ones one or more predictor for cardiovascular events 
Um, the HDL, same thing. There's subclasses there. Uh, uh, LPA, there's uh, some other different tests in there. It's very uh, uh, eye-opening on some of the things you can take a look at and expand upon that make things work and give you more detailed information. Sylvia, just remember this CAD test, uh, it's it's not an end-all and be-all. It's another piece. It's you know, it's not, The good news is not invasive and you can do it. The bad news uh, is that if you're paying for it out of your own pocket, it's probably expensive. Medicare is going to pay for it. It's probably not so bad. But it's it's only about 50% uh, a greater expression of predictability, if you will, than other types of testing. So they're adding a little bit more to it. For our money, I'd like to send uh, patients out for what Dr. Scott just talked about was the VAP test, and it gives you all the subfractions of the good and bad guys. And But also, uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, just doing traditional measurements of oxygen transport. See, as you get older, if you haven't had any problems, you've also developed something called collateral circulation, so you've increased your viability. You Inflammatory know, so, markers, too, by the way, also. So, you know, we're coming up to an end, but it's an area that we can actually talk about, and we probably will one of these Sundays and, and really get into it. But it's not a bad test, but it's not an end-all, be-all. I would try to do that and a VAP test to see what your status is and some other pressure tests that, you know, if you – like to get a hold as we can. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Scott Lamp is your presenter, your host at the Rizal Center for Healing in Fairfax. Call us at 703-698-7117. 703-698-7117. Be there. I promise you this will be something that could change your life. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Love you all. Bye. Take care. Do you suffer from the debilitating symptoms of chronic pain, swelling, and loss of joint motion due to arthritis? Are you taking drugs like Celebrex and Vioxx or other super aspirin prescriptions? If you are, you're increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke by up to 50%. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, host of Dr. Tom Rosell Live Sundays at 12 noon. Why live with pain or the dangerous side effects of drugs when the doctors at the Rosell Center for Healing practicing 21st century integrative medicine can help you experience relief like never before? Simple, safe, chiropractic, acupuncture, and nutritional care can provide significant relief from arthritic pain in less than six weeks. More than 70% of our patients experience a return to life far beyond their expectations. Give yourself the best gift possible, freedom from arthritic pain, naturally. Call today to schedule an appointment. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com.